Chapter 18 Mary Beth Mary Beth jumped at the sound of the alarm beeping next to her and slapped at it through sleepy eyes. Though she set an alarm every night, she couldn't remember the last time she heard it go off. Normally, she opened her eyes five minutes before the alarm was set to go off, and since she detested the electronic sound, she would turn it off and simply get up. Somehow, she had slept longer and deeper last night. When her hands touched the soft sheets beside her, she realized why she had slept better. She was not in the bed at her home. She was at the resort, in a room where the bed felt like a cloud. Regretfully, she opened her eyes. Lucas was stretched out in the big bed beside her, a contented smile on his face. Evidently, he had slept better here as well. Knowing that she could let him sleep a little longer, since they didn't have to drive anywhere, she pushed back the covers quietly and slid out of bed. A part of her longed to pretend she didn't have to work and stay wrapped up in the sheets, but that was not reality. No, the reality was that she wasn't here on vacation. She was here because someone, probably her ex-husband, had been in her house, and her ex-boyfriend turned boss wanted her to stay at the resort until the locks could be changed and guarantee her safety. Mary Beth had always prided herself on living a simple life, but suddenly she felt like she was in the middle of a suspense novel. Mary Beth dressed and fixed her makeup and hair before waking Lucas. Her stomach grumbled as she shook his shoulder. Coffee and breakfast was usually her first stop after showering, even before waking Lucas. But she hadn't thought to grab anything at the house yesterday, and she certainly wasn't going down to the eating area without him. Of course, that brought up the issue of payment. She received an employee discount when dining at the resort, but even with it, the dining could be expensive. She should have brought the issue up with chance, but she hadn't thought that far ahead. However, if she was expected to eat all their meals over the next few days at the resort, she might have to ask Chance to drive her to her house so she could grab some cheaper items. Cereal and PB&Js weren't glamorous, but they certainly were friendlier to her wallet. What's for breakfast, Mommy? I'm hungry. Lucas stretched and then ambled over to the small suitcase she had packed for him. Another benefit to the hotel room was that he had fewer clothes to lose and a smaller chance of losing them. With only one room and an attached bathroom, there were few places for socks or shoes to hide, even if he didn't put them where she had instructed him to. In the dining room, buddy, then we'll have to find Mr. Chance and meet Tiffany. His eyes grew wide. You mean we aren't having cereal? She chuckled and ruffled his hair. While I'm sure they could accommodate a cereal request, you are certainly welcome to have something else. Do you think they might have blueberry pancakes with syrup and maybe bacon and orange juice? Mary Beth bit the inside of her cheek. On one hand, his simple demands were cute, but they also reminded her of how much she'd failed him. Excitement about blueberry pancakes shouldn't come from the fact that she never had time or money to cook them at home. I bet they do. Let's go find out. She tucked the key card in her pocket and opened the door, only to find herself face to face with Chance, his hand raised as if he'd been about to knock. Good morning, he said, lowering his hand. I was hoping I could escort the two of you to breakfast. Yes, we were just going, Lucas said from behind her. It appears my timing is impeccable then. Shall we? He held out his arm for Mary Beth, and though her brain buzzed with questions, she placed her hand on his arm and allowed him to lead the way down to the dining room. The hostess, recognizing them both, led them quickly to the nearest table, handed them menus, and assured them the waiter would be right over before she hurried away. Mary Beth wondered if her hasty departure had more to do with Chance being the boss or the two of them eating breakfast together. The rumor mill would probably be working overtime today, but as she watched Chance interact with Lucas, she wondered if that was such a bad thing. 
The smile on Lucas's face as he talked with Chance was one she hadn't seen in a long time. After the waiter left with their order, Mary Beth turned to Chance. Lucas was busy coloring on a paper menu and hopefully wouldn't catch most of their conversation. So, do you want to tell me how your timing was so impeccable this morning? Chance smiled and shrugged, though she noticed a darkness underneath his eyes that she hadn't spotted before. He obviously hadn't slept as well as she had. Was it because he was worried about her, or was there something more? Is everything okay? Of course. Why wouldn't it be? His words were too bright and came too quickly. Now Mary Beth knew something was wrong. There's a shadow under your eyes I don't think was there before. Chance held her gaze for a minute, before sighing softly and rubbing a hand across his cheek. My dad paid me a visit last night. Your dad? Mary Beth blinked in shock. She didn't think he'd even spoken with his dad over the past eight years, much less let him know that he'd returned. Yeah, evidently he reached out to my mother, and she told him where to find me. That would certainly explain the dark circles under his eyes then. Mary Beth knew how strained the relationship was between Chance and his father. What did he want? Chance glanced at Lucas before leaning closer to Mary Beth and lowering his voice. To tell me he was sorry, and that he's dying. Mary Beth's eyes slid to Lucas to see if he'd heard, but he was still coloring away. What? Chance nodded. Cancer. The thing is... He wants me to forgive him so he can spend the time he has left with me, but I'm not sure that I can. I would forgive my dad, Lucas said without looking up. Mommy says he left when I was little, but I'd still forgive him if he came back. Chance shot Mary Beth an apologetic look, but she shook her head. She should have known Lucas was listening. Sometimes that boy was too smart for his own good. What worried her more was that he said he would forgive Colin. Did that mean he would go with him? Or any man who claimed to be his dad? You would forgive your dad for leaving you, Chance asked. Why? Lucas put down his crayon and stared at Chance with eyes that were wiser than his years. Because God said to. Pride filled Mary Beth even as the fear remained. You're right, Lucas. God did say we should forgive, and it's good that you want to forgive your dad, but I want to make sure that you know you aren't to go with anyone without telling me first, even your dad. I know, Mommy. You tell me all the time not to go with strangers, and I don't even remember what Daddy looks like. A small feeling of relief eased the fear. She had droned it in his head enough. He might not like it, but she thought he would follow her direction if he was ever in that situation. It wasn't perfect, but hopefully it would keep him safe when she couldn't watch him. Of course, guilt crept in as soon as the fear faded. Had she forgiven Chance? It was so easy to say that everyone should forgive, but it was much harder to do it yourself. She sneaked a glance at Chance, but before she could ponder it much further, their breakfast arrived. The omelet she had ordered was better fare than she'd eaten for breakfast in months, and from the way Lucas devoured his pancakes, she knew he felt the same. Thankfully, Chance said nothing as Lucas shoveled the bites one after the other in his little mouth. What must he think of her, though? That was so good. Can we eat here every morning we stay here? Mary Beth opened her mouth to declare this wasn't in her budget, but before she could, Chance nodded. You bet. Your meals are covered as long as you need to stay here. Chance, that's too much. We can't do that. He turned to her. You can, and you will. You're staying here under my insistence. I'm not having you pay for anything extra while you're here. There definitely was a change working in Chance. He'd always been a nice guy back in high school, but he'd been the passively nice kind. The kind who never started a fight, but did nothing to stop one either. He might not have said an unkind word about less popular students, but he had never asked his friends to stop them either. 
Mary Beth wasn't sure he would have made the same offer back then that he was making to her now. Still, her stubborn, prideful side wanted to decline. The need to show him that she was okay and she could provide for herself burned strong within her. But before she could say anything, Lucas spoke up. Are you an angel? What? Mary Beth wasn't sure if the word had come from her or chance. Lucas looked from chance to his mother and shrugged. You gave my mom a better job, you saved us on the road, and now you are being so nice here? You're either an angel or the nicest man I've ever met. I wish you were my dad. Lucas? Mary Beth wasn't sure what to say after that. She could totally understand his five-year-old logic. Chance shook his head and smiled at Lucas. Thank you, Lucas. I think you're a pretty amazing kid, too. And I hope, when I have kids, that I have one just like you. As Lucas beamed, Mary Beth felt another chunk of her wall crumble away. Oh, dear, was she in trouble.